What's up, guys? Welcome hey. to episode 15 of Drinks and Dogs. I have... What up, what up? Well, let's cheers first, fellas, before I introduce you guys. Cheers. Ooh, Mike's getting serious with that drink. Got the that scotch out. Shit, dude. <laughs> I figured we celebrate a little bit, you know? This is episode 15. I got my boy Andy Kruger on right now, bringing the heat as usual. Um, I always wanted I want I wanted to start it off like how like Andy does it, but I can't do it because I just like if I if I have that much energy in like five seconds for the rest of the show. <laughs> I got my brother Oscar Mora. Um, so we've had Oscar on before uh, with drinks and dogs, and now this is the first time he's on as P, a PCU instructor. So let's do cheers, it, fellas, uh, and you know, glad to have you guys on. Thanks for having us, bro. Happy Thanks to for back. having us, man. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Um, so, give me an update. How's, uh, let's start off with Oscar. How's everything been going since the last time we talked? Uh, good, man. Been busy. I uh, We changed some things here uh, at Elevated Canine, so it's going good. I'm not as uh, as busy as I, I was. I hired a bunch of new people, so it's been going really good. Awesome. Yep. I, know, I know we uh, barely crossed paths in Colorado. Yeah, no, man. That would have been some good times. I, I just got back, so... It's it's a group that I've been going to uh, with for like three year, four years now, and just go work some dogs, IPO dogs. Uh, there's a couple of Mondial Ring dogs, Ring dogs, so it's all good. Nice, and um, so Ring too. And then Andy, you have an upcoming little private seminar coming up here pretty soon, right? I do. Yeah, I got a couple of couple of decoys coming out for uh, sort of like a French Ring decoy workshop kind of a nice. deal. So. It's going to be pretty sick, man. It's uh, two and a half, three days, and I'm going to have um, some handlers coming in from roughly in the area. So I'll have probably like six, seven, eight, nine really good dogs here and only, nice. you know, three, three, four decoys. So we're fixing to get busy with that for sure. I'm, I'm pumped nice. for that one. It's coming up in a couple of weeks. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. And for those of you guys who are tuning in who don't, you know, remember the accolades and all these guys have, these guys are both, you know, world competitors, highest level competitors. And uh, oh, you did, Andy, you started in PSA as a decoy as well, uh, as well. And then, you know, obviously super select French ring decoy yeah. and handler. Oscar, you've done French ring and IGP as well. If I miss anything, let me know. Um, nah. So these guys have uh, Mondio ring. Mondio too. Nice. So yeah. top tier competitors, decoys, handlers, you know, they, they do all the, the good stuff here. So <laughs> well, let's, let's break into that a little bit here. So I have a, <clears throat> seminar, I have a seminar coming up here. This, not this weekend, but the weekend after where I'm going to be doing a decoy seminar and I do mostly like nice. hybrid stuff. So like people can be prepared to work anything and everything, you know, from cop dogs to sport dogs, all, all, all and everything. And I found, like, as I've been doing my breakdown with all that stuff, it's really fucking hard to hone in on one thing and just one thing specifically. Like, as you guys both know, because you guys catch a variety of different dogs in, in different sports, and, you know, each sport has its own technique. And then you throw in, like, the personal protection and law enforcement aspect where shit's a little more wild. <laughs> a, little, yeah. a little more wild than that thing. So it's... um. You know, when you guys go out and you teach these seminars, you know, do you guys have a, I guess not necessarily a hard time uh, focusing on one particular thing without losing the crowd? Or do you guys just kind of just like expand and go on like all stuff? You want to go ahead first? All right. I usually, when, when I go, I uh, like the first couple, like if I'm going to go to a new club, I usually take my dog because I kind of just want to show what, what, how I do things. And then after that, I usually just bring one dog out at a time, see what this dog handler need, and then I just go from there. Um, I don't really, you know, like if they're working IPO, obviously, you know, there's certain things you got to look for uh, or Mondial Ring. But now I'm, I've been going to these places for, you know, a bunch of times that I already know all the dogs. I know where they're at. So it's just basically routine stuff. <clears throat> and then you're talking yeah. about doing it as like you're the main decoy, right? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When I go, I'm, I'm the main decoy. Uh, and then, but they, I, I work a lot of obedience. I, a lot of secondary obedience is what I, I do mostly, um, especially for IPO dogs. 
But, you know, again, it, it all depends on the dog. Sometimes, you know, like I have a guy that's like 80, 80 years old or something, right? He's not going to handle the dog the same as a 23-year-old, like super motivated person. Uh, and they can't move the same and all that. So you got to figure out how you can change things around for each person. More Andy. Dude, me? I only do ring, bro. I mean, for real. Um, pretty much just do French ring. Like, if you want, like, I mean, if we're talking a young dog training for French ring, I'm good. Brevet, ring one, ring two, ring three. Come see me. Come train with me. But, like, the other stuff, dude, I don't claim to be Mr. Police Dog Guy. I mean... I can catch a dog, I can work a dog, I can maybe do a decent job with it. But for the most part, if, if people want to train with me, it, it's for French ring. The uh, the other stuff I guess I can do, but I don't think people are, are chomping at the bit to fly across the country to come have me work a, a police dog, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, bro. French, French ring is no joke, man. If you're skilled at French ring, I'm pretty sure, you know, if you dedicated a year to doing something else, you'd pick it up super fast. Yeah. It's just a, you know, it's just a different type of, of work for sure. Yeah, that's true. That, I mean, for like, if, if you're my friend, or, you know, maybe if, if I really like you, I'd be like, okay, I'll work your PSA dog. But yeah. if someone's just like, hey, can you work my PSA dog? I'm probably like, uh, sorry, I don't have time. <laughs> Not a ton of interest in that, but when it comes to ring, like, you know, I, I got it covered. Anything other than that, I can do it, but yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, before we go on to the next question here, I want to point out that all of us are wearing Andy Kruger t-shirts. Now, those guys look good. Now, those are a couple <laughs> of good looking guys. I I don't have that shirt on, but... I got my Oasis it's shirt. A good one. On, so. There you go. It's That's in the cool. same hey, I, family. I heard some good things about your spot, Andy. I remember when jo I think uh, Joe went out there, right? That's right. And he yep. came down. He came back down. He was like, "Man, that fucking place." He's like, it's "Ridiculous." <laughs> like, he mo you motivated him to to do something down here like that. Nice, dude. Yeah, love Joe. Um, I got a good spot, dude. It was it was. Uh, maybe a lot of hard work and a little luck, but I was real stubborn about I wouldn't settle for shit. Can I swear on That's this? Good. Oh, dude. I wouldn't yeah. settle for jack shit. And then I finally got this place and I was like, you're going to have to carry me out of this place. <laughs> you have yeah. to carry me out of here. I'm not going anywhere. It's going to be easy to find me because I'm, I'm stuck here now, dude. Yeah. I, I how, it, how, long have you, how long have you been there? five years nice all right five years now so it's starting to everything's That's coming nice. together now you know now i can kind of enjoy yeah. things it's been a, a building process for for many years you know there's always something to do for sure i just want to catch a bite on that little uh, little island i know you do dude we're gonna make that happen <laughs> we're gonna make that happen dude. that'd be badass dude i bet you hey, can uh, come up you... with all kinds of shit here what's up do you guys do you guys like uh, as, far, as far as business goes? Do you guys ever experience like burnout and shit? Did you hit that spot oh, yet, Mike? Dude, all I mean, like I would say it comes in cycles for me. Like, um, especially like when I'm like constantly going on like seminars and doing all the stuff with like Rayon and just normal business stuff and everything like that. Yeah, I mean, like, dude, because I, I I have like a I don't even know it's I don't know what's called ADD or anything like that, but like I just get hyper focused on specific things and I just like just right. go. For like long periods of time especially with like just training dogs and everything so i'll come into i just i was just talking to my girl erin um the other day i slept for like 12 hours normally i sleep for like four or five <laughs> and i was like i just passed out i was like dude i was like i'm fucking burnt the fuck out so after this next seminar i'm taking a uh, five days off which is nice more than likely going to be like three days three off. days off or something <laughs> like that because you know i'm going to be on my yeah. fucking phone and like talking to like yeah you know doing that stuff but yeah man i I would say twice a year, I probably hit a pretty, pretty big burnout. I just try to manage it and just like, all right, cool. I'm fucking tired and just kind of yeah, just keep going sure. through it. I kind, I kind of hit that earlier this year. I was like, man, fuck. Like I just, you know, I hit this spot. I was like, I don't even know what's next. You know what I mean? I had to kind of step back and be like, what do I really enjoy doing? 
and what am I really good at? And like, you know, just trying to go that route a little bit because yep. yeah, I, I experienced the same thing, man. A bunch of, I, I was busy. So I, I decided just to step back a little bit. So I'm good right now and I'm getting a new puppy that I'm gonna be doing ring with. So I'm excited Ooh. about that. Oh, uh, Ohio road trip. Yeah. I'm gonna go to Indiana again pretty soon, bro. So for sure this time I'll visit you. Hey, just come up north because if you like to drive, you know, I can be a pretty decent co pilot. You know, we can pull over <laughs> the side, I can work your dogs, you know, like just stuff go. like that. <laughs> Dude, that I, could I fucking be sweet. Hate driving, so. Dude, with the, uh, with the burnout, I got super burned out just looking at Mike's schedule. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> dude. this dude, from, from what I see, this dude never rests, but, uh, with the burnout, dude, you know what's good about me is that I like, um, I grew up super blue collar, like hard work, hard work, hard work. Uh, dad's waking up at the, the ass crack of dawn. He's going to work every day, blah, blah. So for me, like work was work. Like you like it, you hate it, you're tired, you're sore, work. Yeah. So I feel lucky. I'm like, I get to train pet dogs, but like every trainer definitely gets super burned out at points. But uh, what motivates me is I'm just like, dude, I freaking love this shit. Like, That's dope. Yeah, I'm burned out, but big deal. Like, you just kind of yeah. have to uh, realize how lucky you are not to be 100%. on a construction site pouring concrete for 10 oh, bucks. Dude. Yeah, you know no, what I mean? Sure. So, no, I, I mean, you still, you still feel blessed 100%. And I mean, I'm sure it wouldn't, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to have a nice little oasis. It does oh, hurt. But... <laughs> no, it doesn't hurt at all. No, but <laughs> dude. dude, dog trainers, like people don't get it 24 7, 365. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, dude. Sure. And I, I work from home. So it's like I work at home, I live at home, I sleep at home, I eat at home, I don't go a goddamn place. Yeah. So the struggle I can definitely you. be real. I think yeah. that's the same for pretty much all of us, right? I mean, like, I have my facility that I go to, but no dogs are stored there or, like, for kennel right. there. So, like, they're all in the house. So, all of I mean, we all do, what, boarding trains out of our own houses and everything like that that we're doing. Or, and then, you know, I mean, I today I was at my facility for a little bit. For the most part, my, my majority of my business is done, you know, right here. Or, right. you know, I'll go to, like, the shop to get to work dogs. That way I don't piss off my neighbors. Cause right, right, right. They, they won't, you know. They, they had enough of Ozzy flying down the street, the street, street <laughs> nailing me or like into a vehicle before. Like, I was like, cool, all right. Right, right, the, right. The, co the cops love me here because uh, in Gilroy, can be a little feisty. <laughs> Dude, so, <A> feisty. <laughs> so going, um, let's actually let's break into like a different, uh, you know, another segue here. So although you guys were, you know, you guys were very high end competitors in the sports that you guys, you know, training and working and all that stuff and obviously it's passion for you because i mean as far as i'm as far as on my knowledge you know sports don't pay the bills um especially in protection sports they actually cost a lot of money right <laughs> right because um, i talked to jake scott um and he was what the mondio us team captain uh and he right. was saying on one of the drinks and dogs that they actually he got they didn't get paid like they barely like they had to raise money to go to what poland or something like that wherever it yeah. was at to yep. go there so when you guys are doing the sport and all the stuff that you love and this is something i struggle with as well because i've been dabbling here and there with just some of the obedience trying to get back in the sport but you know how do you balance the fact of like all right cool i want to do this sports it takes so much time but i also got to take care of business i also got to yeah you know make sure my pet clients and the people that pay the bills and all that other stuff are taken care of go ahead Andy. we lost somebody with bad reception there you oh, no, my, my, it said my 20% battery. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, dude, it's, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Because when you talk to uh, civilians and, and you tell them about your, uh, your competing and how you travel and how you train or, like, maybe, like, how you decoy trials, they go, oh, wow, very neat. How much did you make for that? And then you're kind of like, nothing. And they're yeah. like, why the hell would you do it? One time my client, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm the guy that gets in the suit and gets bit. And they're like, well, how much do you get paid for it? You know, some like some lady in, <laughs> in the suburb, she's like, how much do you get paid for that? I'm like, well, I actually pay my way to go do it. Yeah. And she's like, why the hell would you do that? And I'm like, yeah, 
God, that's kind of a great question yeah. uh, when you think about it. But for me, it's like I, I make my money in dogs either way. Everyone knows that that pet dogs pay the bills. Um, I think of it as like I'm, I'm building a resume. I'm building a career. I'm hopefully building some kind of legacy. So, you know, like uh, a trainer, I don't know, it's, it's named some trainer like uh, Balabanov. He goes, hey, I'm a great trainer. And by the way, here are all my accolades. Here are all my world championships. Here are all my ridiculous scores, even when he didn't win, uh, with all of these different dogs. Not one dog, not two dogs, but with all of these dogs. So I think of it, I'm, I'm going to be in dogs forever. This is what I'm doing. And with the competing and the decoying, I'm like, I'm just – building my uh legacy if that's not too much of a word uh as a dog trainer and i'm putting my money where my mouth is because anyone can say like hey i'm a phenomenal dog trainer and my dog's freaking badass my dog would mess you up it's like all right what sport do you do and what are the scores so you can it's easier to suss out if someone's legit or not because you know, I got the numbers to back it up. Someone could look at me and be like, oh, Andy, he's not much. And then I could say, well, I got this golden baton on my wall that says otherwise. So I like to, I don't know, maybe I feel like I had something to prove. But that's why I like to do it, because I like to just kind of yeah. build my resume and, and my experience. Yeah, no, nah, I think for for me, it's like, to be honest with you, some like sometimes I I finish, you know, I do I do a competition or something, and I'm like, man, like this wasn't really as fulfilling as I thought it was gonna be, you know. Uh, the process to get there was a little fulfilling, but you know, once you get there, it's like, all right, it's done. The next day, nobody even remembers that shit. You're done, right? Like yeah. nobody. And then and and I'm thinking like, shit, I put all that time into this, and then that's it, you know? Like that's how I feel. And then I'm like, and this dude over here. He don't even do jack shit, but he's like a millionaire. Like he's he's killing it in in what he's doing, right? And I'm just like, am I am I uh you know I'm, I'm already getting older. I'm like you know I'm, I'm like fuck man. I'm 34. I got two kids. My wife like how how can I create this like you know I don't know like I think about their school and all, like I I do get stressed about all that shit. And I'm like is should I really be putting all this time into the sport? Uh, but then, you know, I come to realize like, yo, like, like Andy says, like for me, I feel like I need to have a dog to stay sharp in what I'm doing if, because that's what really keeps me motivated. Uh, and that's, what's going to get me out to help more people, you know? So that, that's kind of what, what keeps me going. But I do hit those spots sometimes where I'm like, fuck, like, I'm not even like, this isn't fulfilling for me. Like I could have been hanging out with my kids right now and Why, over here dude? doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I mean, I, I always hit those spots, man. I love that, dude. I love that. I think everyone can relate to that a little bit, dude. Yeah, it's tough, that. man. I mean, I think like and that's was... one of the hardest parts now. Like, because I, I when I, I, I mean, I've, I've told you guys both the story. Obviously, like I started like thirteen, like doing you know shelter shit, like just a bunch of you know positive reinforcement things. And then when I got out of prison, I went in and started doing like a Schutzen because I was boxing and everything like that. So I worked with Terry Macias, the German Shepherd Club. So I did like all that stuff and I was like a helper, but I was like, what the hell? This is so much different than from before. And then I was just, all right, cool. It's like, you know, you know, doing the helper work for all these, like at that time it was shits in. So it was like, you know, level two, level three dogs, level one, like, you know, one dogs. We are going to go to the blunder seeker and like do all that other stuff and like working these gnarly dogs. And I was like, all right, cool. Like this is like pretty, pretty awesome. Cause I can use like the athletic, uh, you know, athletic stuff I had. And just the response times to be a better helper and help these dogs be accelerate and do what they're doing. And then I got burnt out with the politics of, you know, at that time it was Schutzen, was that's what, 16 years ago. And I was like, dude, I was like, I, I don't want to get back into sports. So I just focused heavily on a you know, behavior mod and like all the cases that people would just turn away or just try to like euthanize. And then finally, like within like the last four years, I was like, man, I was like, maybe I should start going back into sport. But like kind of like what, you know, I had battle between like both thoughts, like between like what Andy and you know, and you know, with Oscar, what you were saying. I was like, dude, I was like, all right, cool. You know, I should probably put some like titles on some of my dogs because I have way too fucking many dogs. 
I have way too many that are too skilled to do what the fuck, you know, whatever I do with them now. But then, like, you know, like, what I actually was like, man, I was like, I can be spending time, you know, building, you know, building the business, business. and doing this yeah. stuff that's going to, you know, do all this other stuff. So I'm, like, always, like, conflicted. That's why I was, like, pumped to, like, do this with you guys. Because I'm, like, dude, because like, we all run pretty successful businesses. And I was, like, dude, I was, like, man, I was, like, we're just, like, conflicted in that aspect. And like, I always kind of get into concern that, man, am I, am I just too late? Like to yeah. get into it now, like am I over my head and like everything else, yeah. or like you know, is like what's, hard what, to do it. What's 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 the like? What's your end goal, bro? Like, what do you see yourself like doing? Like, like all right, like we have a pet dog training business. Like, do you see yourself having a huge facility with a shitload of kennels and doing all that, or is it like like what is it for you? Like, what do you see yourself like? You know, what do you want to like? What kind of legacy do you want to leave? I just want to, I mean, I, I did the big facility for a while um, and I did all the kennels and everything like that. And I hated it. Um, I absolutely did. I just hated it. I felt like the quality wasn't there. Um, I felt like, it, I mean, even I had tons of staffing, dude, even at one point, this was shit. I don't think I, I don't think I've said this online before. This was three years ago when um, I got divorced from my ex, uh, my ex-wife. Like, she kicked me out of the house that I bought. And like, I lived in my facility, like, you know, in my I office. Do. For like a long time and like i was in there and i was like dude i was like fuck this so i wanted to find something completely different um and i found out what i ended up doing what we're doing now i mean the end goal for me within primal canada and this is stuff that's already in works is that we're opening multiple facilities uh similar to the way that we uh that we are with uh two different companies we have the primal canine and we have the bite shop which is like a working dog uh you know dog store uh, you know, I'm working on a variety of different things with dog food and everything like that. So there's, and then so, Ray Allen stuff. So, you know, my goal right now is like that I'm just trying to, trying to do it as big as we can. And you, know, especially with PCU, like with you guys, you know, me and Andy have had discussions on the back end of like, you know, some DMs. I'm like, dude, I'm trying to get everybody up. Like, that, like that's, you know, that's like, that's the whole, yeah. the whole goal. I don't really see a ceiling yet. You know, I have, yeah. I have individual goals on a weekly or monthly basis and, you know, even quarterly basis, but Right now, I'm just like, all right, cool. Let's see how much further we can go. Because as far as I'm concerned, this is all never been done stuff. But uh, you know, that's 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 the part though too. It's like right. I'm, I'm consistently, dude. I have a fucking uh, a food truck company I'm working on right now called The Good Life. It's like pizza, French <laughs> nice. fries. Uh, that's like, dope. Like burritos with French fries in them and shit like that. Like I have like a variety of different things that I'm doing at the moment. But um, like that's like, that's the part because I'm like, all right, I have like. Let's say I have three dogs right now that I, I could compete in the specific sports, depending on what, you know, what I want to do with them. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I can't stay like in that lane for too much just because we do so much different stuff, you know? It's so, like, that's right. like, the problem right. that I'm having. Dude, you have 37 businesses. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I got about six right now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I told you I got burned out just looking at Mike's schedule. Dude, you know what it is for me, though, about the competing and stuff? There's just something about, especially as a decoy, but as a competitor, too, there's something about the feeling of getting out on that field in a trial that's just different than everything, different than training, different than making money in business, different than uh, selling a fancy protection dog. There's For me, there's just something about that feeling, and I'm a complete degenerate i really am i just keep chasing there's something about it i'm like a gambler that just keeps coming down to the table it's like well you just keep losing why do you keep doing it and you're like bitch you don't understand like there's just (laughs) so so it's like a healthy obsession uh but but i have the personality where i get unhealthy obsessed with whatever i'm doing and then that's all i do so there's just something yeah. about that feeling. And then on top of that, I don't know why, but I really am hell-bent on getting respect from French ring, like real French ring, like in France, like the big boys, like the, the legendary families in France. Like I'm just hell-bent on, for some reason, having them go, oh, oh okay. That as a, as a right. competitor or a decoy? Both. Both, but definitely a decoy. Probably more a decoy. You you want uh, them that you want them that when you go to France, you're gonna go Andy Mavanga. That's his name. 
<laughs> I love Hervé, bro. He's the shit. I love that guy. Shout out, Hervé. I'm sure you're watching. Yeah, uh, yeah dude. I don't know. There, yeah, that's, that's it for me. I that's love getting on that field. And even like I just decoyed a trial uh, a, a few weeks ago, and there weren't, weren't even any ring threes there. But still, decoy in that trial, I like it because, number one, it's dangerous. French, decoy in French ring with good dogs is fucking dangerous. Um, and I love that shit, dude. And I'm yes. always no, – there's, there, there's something else, man, about French ring. And, like, I've done a ton of – like, I mean, back in, like, 2013, 2014, I was doing a bunch of uh, trials or whatever. Bro, they're just – you can't compare – being a decoy in French ring to any anything else. I've done Mondial I know, ring, bro. Mondial ring nationals. Uh, you know, I've done two of them. I've done a bunch of uh, you know, shuts and competitions or whatever. There's just nothing you can compare, especially when you have like people that talk shit in there. Like, oh dude, yeah, I love baby. It. I love that shit. Like I, I love was, that shit too. Yeah, bro. I remember I did I decoyed a trial once with uh, with Richie. Uh, the judge and and this dude was like talking about his dog and hyping up his dog that he he brought that you know this dog was in the selectives up in in France and he was like oh you're gonna like this dog telling Richie and Richie was like hey bro whoop this dog's ass yeah like say no more let's go <laughs> and I, I, I mean, but yep. that, that's that's what I mean French ring is just a it, it's just different man for sure so I I, see what you're I agree from. with that dude I agree and like for me. I'm always chasing like that perfect performance. I might not ever get it, but I'm always chasing that highlight reel performance. And then as a handler, I'm chasing that big boy score, 370s, 380s, holy fuck, 390s. I don't know if that's going to happen. I, I might be bald and, and gray when that happens, but <laughs> there's just like something about it, dude. I'm just like chasing that, that performance. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Sauce. The, I, I got a question for Oscar. Yeah. How do you get such a damn good focused heel on your dog? Tell me the secret. Uh, bro, there is no secret, man. It's Tell just, me the secret. How do you get that? You just you just <laughs> you you pay the dog in, in focus, bro. That's all we do. That's it, man. Dude. That's all you do. And IPO, I mean IGP, what I do with Wapple right now. I mean, that's literally, you know, the whole routine is you want the dog to have that emotion and focus heal. And can you guys still hear me? Yeah. yeah I lost you guys. All right. And then, um, so, you know, that that's what it is. However, uh, I did, I, I I don't know if I, uh, if you know, but I sw I went straight from IPO3 to French Ring 3 with him. And it really? did not work out. Yeah, it did not work out. He just did not last. I had to pull him like uh, three exercises before it was over. I had to pull him because... Uh, he just he was gassed out because of all that focus heel. He just couldn't oh. do it. Yeah, he was done, man. This is no the, joke. The gas yeah. out is real. Yeah, so for sure with my next dogs, I'm gonna do it, but I'm definitely gonna teach and just a, a regular because he's just Damn. so used to giving me that focus. So now I'm gonna be make sure that you know I tone it down a little bit, teach him to like do an exercise, relax. Do an exercise, relax, like a lot of that totally. type of stuff. Because yeah, yeah, that's that's crucial, dude. Uh, what do you not think? Not to interrupt, but there is a course on PCU about cooling down your dogs by Andy Green. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. <laughs> Shame, shameful that's good. plug right there. <laughs> yeah. Come on, people, don't be cheap, dude. <laughs> Oscar, what do you think about this? What do you think about like uh, a trainer like Ivan Balabanov? That's like, I don't do any luring with food for a focused heel like no fuck that he's like i don't do any yeah. of that shit yeah i mean if you want my honest opinion on it bro when i see ivan's healing it's like it's nice it's gonna get you you know all the points which if you're playing in the sport is good but i always have like this thing of like i want a lot of energy like if, if i'm gonna be doing ipo like i want my shit to look like very powerful and so you know I think that you get a lot of that, you know, that, you know, that, that dog that's like coming from the rear with a lot of luring, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not something, I mean, that's just that muscle memory. So yeah, me too. I get what, he, I get what he's saying. Um, I, I just, I just disagree with it. You know what I mean? Because I like, I like a different picture. Now, if you like his picture and his style, a hundred percent, that's the guy you're going to go see. You know right. what I'm saying? Personally, 
you know, I look up to him. He's the I've been to the seminars. I he's one of the yep. he's one of the best, if not you know, in IPO, but definitely not what I like. I know I'm kind of the same. What do you think, Mike? Like, no food luring for attention heel, like especially when they're young. I lure everything, as you guys have seen, and Oscar makes fun of me about my glove. Um, so, <laughs> uh, I started so doing it too, but I can't find them anymore. Dude, I, I, I mean, I do. I mean, like for me, like I'm, I'm not as critical when it comes to what my focus still looks like. I mean, as you guys have probably seen, like through my videos, like I just want my daughter to look at me as we walk, like you know, as we're going and doing the same things. I don't necessarily because I'm not competing in anything in particular right now. Like I'm not looking for a lot of emphasis and power and just. Uh, like you know like the strut and everything like that I, I do a little bit with like my little dog set right now um but i mean i i honestly i you know I, I feel like that thought process is a bit like old school if anything you know i i think like you know the dogs in general once you want specific head movements once you want specific positions uh if you want a lot of emphasis in it i mean the best way to do it in my opinion is always going to be you know luring you know i feel like that's like right. the way to go um, but you know, that's my opinion. I mean, I'm nowhere near as accoladed as fucking Ivan and all the shit that he's done and all the other stuff. So fuck I me. Mean, he might be in the match. I, I, and... I will tell you though, Andy, I have a, a good friend of mine. His name is Juan Mendoza. He does a uh, French train down here and, um, bro, right. his dogs heal like crazy. And he does very little bro. luring. What he does, he, ba I mean, he basically, I think he does what Ivan probably does, but I mean, his looks a little more intense, but he basically just puts the dog in the position and just feeds there. But at like six weeks old, bro, he has them like with their food going to the heel position and he has like a little bucket hanging right there and he's just walking around. The dog's just like prancing, like looks really good. He doesn't do a ton of luring either. So I would say, I mean, I've seen people that do a ton of luring and people that do no luring. And at the end of the day, man, like I think a lot of it also depends on the dog. Like, if your dog needs more luring, give him more luring. If the yep. dog is, like, amped up and crazy, he might not need all that luring. So, you know, it what, depends what, on uh, that, too. I just seen a post that, like, James Guillory just posted or something like that, like, with a big BDA. He's like, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat. Same thing with training the dog. And, <laughs> yeah. you, know, those, you know, those, I mean, I don't skin cats, people, but, you know, obviously, mm -hmm. but... uh you know, obviously there's a bunch of different ways, different perspectives, different ways, you know, that's why like the beauty of drinks and dogs and like, you know, the PCU stuff is there because there's so many different ways. Like, you know, all of us, you know, we all train dogs, but we all probably train dogs a bit differently as well. You know, and like, obviously like you guys are yeah. high end competitors. Yeah. So it's like, you know, these, you guys probably train differently in different, like between the sports that you guys compete in. Dude, so what, what are, what are, what are, what are like certain skills? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Andy. Well, okay, well, it might, it might tie into what you just said. I, I got a question for you guys. Heart, single most hardest exercise or behavior to train, let's say, in dog sports, period. I think, I think of all time, hardest exercise to train, I could be high here, but object guard. Yeah, I think it's the I, object I, guard. I think it's the hardest. I mean, I think I think that the object guard has a lot of components to it. It's not just like, oh, I'm just gonna stay here and he's gonna come here. No, nah, like he's got to stay there, come exactly. up with like intensity, bite, and then want to come back. Like, which is like totally against what the dog wants to do. So, a hundred percent, you know, I think that's that's a very hard uh, exercise to teach uh, for. Now, if switching sports for me, the hardest thing to teach is a fast retreat. Like, That's go funny. out and come back to a front Ooh. and like hold that whatever you got in your mouth without chewing it because you're gonna lose a shit ton of points. That to me is probably one of the hardest uh, exercises. A fast for retreat, so the dog. Whoa. Yeah, like yeah, because there's, there's one thing is to pick something up, bring it to you. I mean, that shit is easy for I think it. But if you're gonna be doing like. In, like he's got to go out really fast, come back really fast, and hold it right in front of you. To, like for me, I yeah, know, I'm not very skilled at that. I think that's the hardest one. That's a great answer. I like that. What about you, Mike? So I have a funny story about the object guard. So I taught 
shit, it was eight, nine years ago, I was learning an uh, object guard and I was trying to, I was learning with another dog and I was just, all right, cool. So I was like working on like meters and all this other stuff. I drew this whole big outline on this turf thing and I was like, all right, cool. I'm gonna figure this out. And I started working it. I'm like, just breaking it down by shit that I was reading people I was talking to. And I was like, all right, cool. So I think I, was, I think I got this here. And like, it, with the lines on the floor, and like, this is the whole part about like associative learning with dogs and even with people is that like, you know, I was like, and obviously I didn't, well, short cut to the story, I wasn't wearing a cup. Um, so I <laughs> came in with this German shepherd that I was teaching object guard on. And I was just like, all right, cross the line a little bit. I was walking in, teaching them like when to bite, losing like least pressure to get them in to go into where I need them to go once he's across a specific space. And then finally, okay, the dog's doing good. Then I got cocky, but I was like, oh, dog's great. So I started circling around, started drip, drop, dropping my hands a little bit. And then the, all of a sudden I, I, I tapped the line of where they were going to be at. And the dog came in and just nailed me right in the crotch. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> I, was like, dog, fuck all this shit. I was like, I'm done with it. So I stopped all of it. Um, but, <laughs> but the, Andy, the one, go ahead. the hardest thing for me, because I have zero patience for this, and Oscar touched on it, is the hold of a retrieve. Uh, so I did like a, like dumbbells for the longest time, but I could not get the dog to like, I, like, I would get so frustrated because I, I, mean, I had literally ADD with it that I just didn't take the time to just, you know, make sure the dog wasn't chompy. And then all of a sudden, like, we started talking about, like, PSA stuff a few years back. So I'm trying to get the dogs to retrieve on, like, pipes and, you know, whatever, crutches and, like, all this other stuff. And I just, I it, for me, it was more frustrating than hard to teach. It was just more like, dude, like, I don't want to fucking spend 30 minutes in here <laughs> trying to teach you how to hold on to this thing. Like, I got a dog back here in the kennel that wants to murder people, so I just don't want to deal with your shit right now. Yeah, <laughs> right dude, now. Like, that was the hardest thing for me. Like I was like, the 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 retrieve on different objects and different textures and everything like that. That was one of the harder things for me. That's a great yeah. point. I could so, teach you a hold a hold. I could teach like you know, but just something about like you know going out, coming back fast, and you know I I I could do it, but for sure it's one of the things. But you know, going back to the object guard, uh, Andy, uh, how, do you, how do you usually start it, man? Because, you know, there's a very, like, the French ring way is, like, you know, put them there and just wait till he walk, goes in, give him the bite, correct them, put them back. Or do you break it down and, back, and like, back change some of it? What do you, what do you, what do you feel about that? Uh, look, dude, if, if anyone, I'll just be totally honest, anyone that's seen uh, some of my dog's ring three performances, they probably wouldn't call me Mr. Object Guard. So, you know, I think I'm, I'm mediocre at it, but the way that I taught... Um, my, well, let's be clear. Andy's mediocre is everyone else is amazing. So, <laughs> let's, let someone is... <laughs> yeah, I'm no... Uh, but, yeah, I, I appreciate that. But uh, with, with my guy, yeah, I just started, like, <clears throat> super puppy, um, harness... Oh uh tub hold him on there the guy walks in he bites we get him off we put him back on the tub and then we kind of progress from there like you know we we use the stick and some of the back pressure to indicate when it's okay for him to bite and then we over time start to phase that out i really like um i think it was uh i forget whose seminar i was at uh, it was several years ago, but they uh, they like to use the stick as they're walking in, tut, 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 tut. and then once they get into yeah, a yeah. certain radius, they stop the stick, and then the dog knows that he can buy it. So, like, I kind of do some yeah. stuff like that. I think that, John does some of that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, man, yeah, I just kind of I, I harness it up. Uh, I do a lot of the work for the dog in the beginning, and then and then I try to phase that out. Um, I actually, I got a couple new puppies coming pretty soon that I'm, I'm excited to play nice. around with, with some new ideas and like do some nice. totally different stuff. But dude, that's why I say, I, I, I think it's the hardest because like I've trained it on one dog and that's worked for him and you yeah. know, it's, it's been great for me, but I also know that, um, some people that I've trained with in the past, I'm like, Oh my God, I don't know shit about the object guard. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really like, uh. I saw um, uh, Forrest work with an object guard, Forrest Mickey, and he did it like uh, from the, he got it from this Mondio guy, 
But basically, like, I mean, they obviously they start everything with a tug, but because you know, so say you're going, you're you're circling around, dog circling around, you mark it, you toss the tug for that. The dog comes out, bites, play, play, play. You stand still. The dog goes back to the object. You reward that because you could with a tug, you could reward all these things separately by right. tossing the tug. You know what I'm saying? So he breaks all this thing down and. For sure. Like I did it like that with my dog, and I mean, obviously we we haven't com competed, but he does a he does a pretty nice object guard, and then uh, Joe helped me out with some of it too, you know, so to clean it up. But the foundation was done like that, and I really I I think if you teach all the little pieces separate, and then once you put it together the way you the, the way you do it, it really clicks with the dog instead of like you bite and then you're hammering his ass to come back to the object. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because dude. It, so, it's crazy complicated. You're right. Crazy, crazy complicated. Dude, like literally like in training, especially leading up to a trial, like in training, I'm legitimately stressed. Like I'm not having <laughs> a good time. It is not fun, dude. I'm stressed because, hey, on the field, I'll give the commands and we'll see what we got. Yeah. So competing hey. doesn't even really stress me out. It's the training where I'm like, eh. Yeah, back in 2014, man, there was a, a dog named uh, I, I don't know where he he came from Mexico, and he was they were gonna do the French Ring Championship here, the the Nara Championship, bro. This dog was like doing face attacks on the object, right? So they, <laughs> they beat the shit out of him. They beat his ass, so he wouldn't want to come out. So the day of the trial, he'd come out and bite and come back. But in training, it was like, nah, we don't even want him to like come out at all because yeah. we want him to, yeah. So you know. It I've didn't seen matter, that. bro. This this dog knew as soon as he was in competition, it was like he was gone, man. And they were. Dude. I talked to the dude. He's like, we were in the hotel last night, beating his ass so he wouldn't come out. And I'm like, dude, just train him, bro. Dude, <laughs> if I could, I've seen that so many times in training. The dog won't bite on the basket. He just will not bite. And then they're like, okay, perfect. He's ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It That's somehow crazy. works. It somehow fucking works. <laughs> you, just, you just have to have the right dog. And that was like uh, you know, one of my mentors, uh, Terry, like his dog. I that Literally, that was the same shit. They fly a couple of days, fry the shit out of that dog right before on the field. That way he wasn't a shady-ass bastard when it came to like trial. And then, Bro, so it could be brutal sometimes, man. Uh, you know, like obviously, you know, you try to do the best you can. But sometimes you see some stuff, man, like when competition gets mixed up with this. Man, bro, I seen I seen a handler literally throw the dog in the car, drive, get out somewhere, and just like hammer the dog for like messing up in the car. Like it's crazy, bro. What, what at that like, point, like competition? At that like, point, it's like, what are we this? even doing? Yeah. What are we yeah, even fucking crazy, doing, man? Bro. Like, what am I doing here? That's yeah. yeah that's man. it's that's the it's problem. Ridiculous. But yeah, when these guys told me that, I'm like, dang, that's crazy. You know, I was like, I can't oh, yeah. you guys are doing and it didn't even work. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, you didn't, you didn't get top three or even uh, a podium. Nah, so. He didn't even he didn't even pass, bro. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> oh, <shit>. Shocking. <laughs> uh, what about so the cool thing I've been I've been even researching more since I talked like, you know, more about that stuff is what do you think about that MBBK uh, Belgian ring uh, muzzle? Oof. Uh, what do you call it? Object guard. I don't even know what that is. So they do an object guard, but I think instead of whatever the meters, it's I want to say it's the same yeah. thing. The, do the dog's got to hit you with the muzzle and go back instead of like bite. Okay, basically. that's kind of. And then there's a secondary decoy in the suit. So oh, there's a guy yeah. in like a jumper, like a normal like you know like one suit thing with like what walking okay. in like whatever type of equipment. Like sometimes they bring him in like little golf carts and some shit. And then, like, there's a decoy walking around, and then all of a sudden, like, the dude walks past the line, and then he gets nailed by it. Dude, that's yeah. badass. That sounds sick. <laughs> it, it is, bro, but if you I, – I would – I mean, I don't know. I, I I guess I like a certain type of muzzle fighting that – I don't know if I really like the dog to hit and come back. Like, if the dog's going to be muzzle fighting, I want that dog to be, like, grabbed and taken it's out of there. a good point. You know what I mean? I yep. mean, I like the – when when I see muzzle fighting, I love like the tail all the way up with the hair sticking out a little bit in the back. Like that's uh, you like know a real that? fight. Yeah, yeah, bro. I don't like really a real like, fight. Yeah, I don't really, I you call don't it getting really kicked like out of the club. Yeah, man. I don't, I don't know if I really like that. Uh, uh, just one hit and come back. 
I like it from a, like a technical point of view. You like know what sport, I mean? Yes. It's like everything isn't haymakers. Sometimes, you know, yes. it's cool, but dude, yeah, nothing, nothing's going to beat a full on fucking muzzle attack, which I know Mikey Mike's no stranger to that, dude. I see yes. your guys' <laughs> muzzle stuff all the time. And I'm like, dude, I wouldn't even volunteer for that. <laughs> no, man, it hurts, bro. Muzzle fighting hurts. It's no joke. Mike, oh, yeah, which one of your it. which one of your dogs will it has the nastiest muzzle attack? Fuck. Uh, well, Ozzy's knocked me unconscious, and I haven't been. I haven't been. Oh, shit, I mean, I haven't been dropped in a long time. Uh, Cerberus, I don't work him because I don't work him because he's my dog and he's a psychopath and he doesn't understand the line between like, oh hey, like we're training and like hey, you know, I'm gonna murder you. Um, so like I just stay as handler. Service probably, service broken my last two apprentices' ribs. Um, well, obviously nice. in position <laughs> and like things of that nature. Uh, but like, I gotta go. I mean, as far as brute force right away, it's gotta be Aussie. But as far as like what like what Oscar was describing, um, that service he's a he's a prey monster. He's a psychopath. So he's just like he's in there like no matter what. Like he just he doesn't care. He's yeah. also got an eye bite off of like one of my buddies. He tried to do uh, muzzle work with him, um, so he wrapped oh, his sorry. legs around him. He slipped it, and then he bit him in like the inside thigh. And nice. This is, this is on Instagram as well. So, <laughs> um, so now, he thinks, stuff. <laughs> now he knows, like, oh hey, this shit comes off. <laughs> I'm gonna get a live bite. So he's always like trying to stick his uh, like mouth in, or like muzzle in between people's legs so he can slip it off himself. He's a, he's a dirty little shit bag. Yeah, I, nah, like, I stay in a suit. I'm a suit. Yeah, I, I definitely, like, if I'm going to do a muzzle attack, bro, I go lift the dog up with the muzzle on, like, make sure that they don't pop off. Three or four checks, time. bro. That's what I'm like, all right, I need I need three more checks. I need you to swing that dog by the muzzle. I need to make, make sure the shit's not coming off. Yeah. And, like, no, that's I, pretty I much love, how we do I it. I love that stuff, man, but I would only do it, like, if I'm training with, like, like Joe or somebody that really, like, we, we are on the same page because – you yeah. get your bit. And we've done a lot of like keep it a little loose, let them hit you, slip it off and give them like a, you know a, a hidden sleeve bite, like that type of stuff. Um and but again, you got to know somebody who's holding the line, they got to know what they're doing. Like you can't just, you know, you got to yeah. trust them. Yeah, trust yeah, them. They man. know what they're doing. I mean, we've worked yep, with yep. trainers here before and like there's like the back end of like the jaw is coming out of the muzzle. <laughs> And like I'm just like, dude, it was like we looked at photos and we didn't see this then, but we saw it like in a photo and I'm like No, we saw it then. And I was like, dude, I was like, what the fuck? Like that, <laughs> that is no bueno. Dude, Oscar, what's up with your corso? Do you have a, Man, do you have a corso? I mean I've always I started I started with corsos, bro. So I, I got this little like you know is love love thing for Corso, so he looks badass. Cool. I love Corsos too. Yeah, he's he's cool, man, but he's not he's not the hardest dog, but he looks scary. Yeah, he does. Nobody he yeah, nobody will come in. That's for damn sure. Nobody will come. Are you doing IGP with them, or what are you doing with them? Yeah, I'll probably do IGP with them. I mean, he's he's like I said, he's not a he's not a very hard dog, so Dude, that's what we'll be doing shit. with him. As long as he looks hard, that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, do you guys know about the the uh, PSA's version of uh, Schutzen, American Schutzen? I just started learning about it a little bit, uh, and I'm I think I'm going to certify as a as a helper decoy, or whatever. Uh, we're having one in the next couple couple weeks, so I might do that. Uh, Are they just, doing? They're they're not doing tracking, right? They're doing narcotics. Yeah, the, well, there's a couple things. I think there's one one of the play, uh, spots in this new thing is like the dog's got to be put through. Um, like unstable surfaces or things like that. And, yeah. And then like the, the protection is different for sure. I think there's going to be like one scenario that's like, you know, a little outside the field or something like that. I don't really know all the details on it. It sounded kind of cool. There's a guy named yeah. Luciano. Um, he's out here. I think he's in Fresno. He, he breeds uh, Dutchies, but it was like called like the West Coast like protection thing or whatever he was doing. This is, I want to say, yeah, it's probably like six years back. And he was talking about doing something, and it sounded very similar to what the American Schutzen, uh, you know, thing was going to be. And I was just, I was yeah. just wondering because I haven't been able to find a, a particular source as far as like what is actually going to go. And obviously, I haven't really been trying super hard to figure out either because 
Yeah, Obviously. I'm sure it's Googleable or something like that. <laughs> I think there's a, I think there's room, there's room for a, for a new one, man. Like there's, a, there's space for something new, that uh, I think could, could be, you know, like the street league of skateboarding for dogs. You know what I mean? Where, right. I think, I think something like that would be dope. That's a good way to put it. Well, don't give me no more ideas, bro. Because like you know, already I'm gonna like, right, just, like look, start bro. manufacturing so this, this is, shit. This like, is, this is because I've already been thinking about it. Like, I was this like, there's APPBA. The right? I like their scenarios. There's uh, things in Ring that I like, and then there's things in PSA that I like. I'm like, here it goes, how bro. Can look, we... <laughs> Mike on the seven. This is what business. it's gonna be. This is what it's gonna be, bro. This is what the competition is gonna be. You're gonna start at this street, and you're gonna work your way to this street, and there's gonna be. Five different scenarios there. One of them is going to be a bum walking with a freaking, you know, uh, a shopping cart or something. And he's going to throw something at you. The dog, like, you know, streetly, bro. Like in the regular street. <laughs> yep. Walk off a couple of streets. And we're going to do something like that, man. Dude, I'm a little actually, nervous of the crowd that might attract. But, okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's, it's, <laughs> it's only a private event, man. And there's going to be money involved. There, okay. Okay. <laughs> now we're talking. Come on, Mike. Here. Let's go. All right, dude. Don't. I'm already. It's already. It's already going, bro. Right. Mike just got his 38th well, business idea. Well, when, once we get off of this, I'm gonna have a fully formulated plan in my head. And I'm like, all right, cool. I already got the location. So I was like, in my mind, I already know where we're gonna go. Cause yeah, <laughs> where I sold my last personal protection dog, that's where we're going. Now we gotta come up with the scenarios. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm telling you, bro. Uh oh. All right, so. Let's talk about, um, you know, let's go back into, like, you know, the pet arena and everything like that. As far as pet stuff, you know, what are you guys, um, I guess, what are the bigger struggles you guys deal with in your own areas? I know, like, me and Oscar in California, Oscar being down south, me being up, you know, more north, and, like, Andy, you're in the middle of, you know, the oasis uh, with all the stuff. And just traveling uh, throughout the country, I've noticed just dogs you know depending on which state and which like section of the country you're in behavior is completely different yeah because i noticed when i traveled in minnesota dogs with reactivity issues you know the the work they were able to get in throughout the year wasn't even as close to you know people on the west coast or people on the far east because of the the weather like the coldness so they weren't able to work on the reactivity and the behavioral issues for certain periods of time because a lot of times you know it's too cold to go outside uh, and, you know, like over here, like in Cali and like certain parts, like, you know, Florida or whatnot, depending if there's a hurricane happening or where the fuck's going on over there. Um, or like, you know, other parts of the country where it's not tons of snow, you know, the the weather didn't inhibit, like, you know, the, the behavioral issues because they're able to do consistent work. What are you guys seeing uh, just based on where you're at? Man. Um, Go ahead, Andy. Dude. Separation anxiety is always the toughest, isn't it? That's that's what I I get the most. Of. I don't really do like aggressive dog training, or I don't really do like a ton of like behavior modification stuff. Just like uh, separation anxiety. But dude, you know what the biggest problem is with pet dogs? Not that it's a problem, but one of the biggest challenges in pet dogs is is the owner's mentality. And I know that's like a super cliche, who's harder to train, the dog or the owner? Uh, but it's like, dude, like people get a dog and then their mind starts going and they build this whole thing in their mind and it's all off. It's all off and you have to take all of that down and then you have to start to rebuild the whole thing after the board and train. So, you know, most of my board and trains, I'm like, okay, this three weeks is going to be smooth sailing, but then I got to get you back with your owner. And like, I think across the board, it doesn't even matter where you live. Like the, the board and train should be the easy part, but then making that shit work in someone's house that you just met and barely know Ah, and it, people love their dogs, of course. So, you know, they're very emotional about their dogs and the ideas they have about their dogs. So you have to kind of get into that and try to finagle your way into changing their mind. Like, you know, you basically have a grown adult who's probably a pretty successful person who you have to tell them like, well, you're very wrong and you need to do <laughs> things the opposite way that you've yeah. been doing them. 
And you need to do it in a way that's not, that's going to like actually inspire them to do it and not just be like, that's wrong. Do it that way. Cause yeah. ain't no one's going to do that either. So is, is there a certain set of guidelines you set? Like when you drop the, like do, drop the dog off, like, yo, if the dog is not with you or in his bed or you can't be watching him, he's going to be in his crate. Like, is there like, do you set those? Like when they, when the dog goes back home, dude, if you even say off leash free roam around me, I'm going to have a panic attack. <laughs> I'm going to freak the fuck out. If the dog is off of a leash and roaming around the house, I'm going to freak the fuck out. Yeah. One of my special rules for the house for every pet owner is this. Anytime the dog enters your home, they are to go directly to their climb or directly to their crate. And they're not allowed to climb for less than an hour. So if you don't have an hour, they must go to their crate, but there's never a time where your dog walks in the house and the leash comes off and your dog goes, what do I feel like doing now? Let me go to the kitchen. No, fuck that. I'm going to let you out to potty. I'm going to take you for a walk. I'm going to take you to the park. And then when we enter the house, I'm going to escort you, AKA heel directly to your climb where you will remain for an hour minimum. And if not, you'll go directly to that crate and everyone goes, well, how long do I have to do that? It's not about how long you do it. Like, well, do that for a week and then let him do whatever the fuck he wants and you'll be golden. Like, no, this, it's a lifestyle change. There's no off leash free roam until you 100% trust your dog and you're willing to bet money. They're going to do every command you tell them. If you don't trust them, get them the fuck out of your bed and quit letting them waltz around the house like they goddamn own the place. It's a half million dollar house and you got this asshole just <laughs> running around. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Half a million dollars in California is like a shack. <laughs> yeah. Bro. <laughs> hey, bro, that's my house you're talking about. <laughs> you live in LA, bro. That There's no way. You're, you're in. Oscar's over here seeing like a million dollar mansion in that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Nah, yeah, I think, that's... Uh, for, for me, bro, the last, the last, uh, obviously the, the owners always, you know, like if you get good, good, own, like good owners, man, that are going to follow the steps, easy, easy peasy. However, I have been encountering a bunch of insecure dogs that, um, I mean, they can't even see anything swing by them because they, you know, we just had one that was shitting himself. Uh, as soon as somebody walked by, he'll shit himself. He'll, you know, <laughs> and, uh. Um, he shit himself. And uh, so, anyways, uh, those are some of the issues we were having. So, uh, that's kind of what I've been doing. Hey, with is, a lot now lately. is that is that genetics or is that coddling? I think a lot of it is genetics. I think a lot of it is genetics for sure. And right, for sure a lot. Uh, some of it can be the exposure. Like they haven't been able to get them out. Because if it if it wasn't the genetics, I definitely think that a dog could turn around. Kind of like I've seen dogs that have spent right. their lives in a kennel and they come out and they're like good, but then you have these dogs who have been everywhere, they show them everything, everything, but they're still like a mess, you know what I mean? Yeah, and obviously, dude. the owner doesn't know that it's been reinforcing all the bad behavior, so it's just made it worse. But for sure, it started with bad genetics, in my opinion. Fair point, yeah. Yeah, fair point. I think it's a little a little bit of both. What do you think, Mike? If you get just an absolute mess of a pet dog, genetics or nature or nurture? I'm a nurture guy, so I I deal with a lot of that. I mean, like that's how we got that's essentially how we kind of blew up a little bit over here was that I dealt with dogs that like most trainers are just like, fuck it, dogs dogs bad, can't do it. And we took a little bit of time, which is why our board and training program is a bit different um, than most people's um, to develop. But what that's hence the price tag on it and everything. But I mean, we get through a lot of stuff. I mean, the cool thing is that we're very honest with our clients and we just tell people like, hey, like this is the peak your dog's going to be at. You're probably, you know, you don't have to deal with much more. I mean, like we, I want to say in the last... 10 years of doing like boarding trains and even like when I wasn't doing primal canine I was like you know the Mike Jones dog psychology thing I would had to tell people oh shit oh Damn. yeah bro <laughs> oh yeah dog <laughs> it, it was there <laughs> um, it, it, 
it was a uh, we dealt with a lot of different cases and like i had maybe three or four cases where i'm like yeah your dog is kind of fucked up and i mean like when like you pull on the leash like this the dog immediately rolls over and shits and pisses off bad sign or like for bad sign all of a sudden <laughs> you're walking down It'll the street shark eyes and attacks you like that's stuff gonna like take a that. while like those are the things like i because i'm very stubborn when it comes to behavior like i'm like, all right cool like we can get through this i figure out how to do it and like you know do whatever i gotta do i mean there's times where i had fucking a, one of my apprentices holding a secondary leash as we're walking down the street in a normal walk in case the dog like tries to react and comes up the leash like, big dog, and like all of a sudden just pull the leash back i'm like dude it's like all right cool we got to correct this dog and, and you know people are looking at us all crazy while the dog's like trying to murder me and secondary leash has like a correction collar i have a correction collar on and we're compressing until the dog chills out and we go again i'm like I'm like well this is a you know a giant dog that's trying to murder me um and i have <laughs> i have to have some form of extension here and we like, made, made great success with it like what are we even doing at that point bro what the fuck are we even doing training that dog at that point it's like <laughs> Dude, but like that's the part. That's the thing that like that was the thing that got that helped me so much when it came to like the just training and understanding certain behaviors on an extreme level. You know, whether it was genetic, it's like you know dealing with like kids. Like you know, I, I always like you know relevate this or put this to like you know normal like teaching kids like kids with like special needs. Like you deal with like dogs with like special needs to a certain extent, and like you know you're like all right, cool. Like I can get you this far, but you have a liability. Definitely. And dude, like, that's the smart that I'll be honest with about people. Dude, sometimes I feel like, you know, people um, that aren't in, in dogs don't maybe realize this, but sometimes it's like with your pet board and trains, it's like not even like real dog training anymore. Like what, this isn't dog training. Like it's like this, this is what I compare it to. So someone brings you a board and train that's like a, a big mess, right? It's like coming to a tattoo artist and you have a giant piece on your arm and you go, hey, I need you to cover this up. <laughs> it's all black. I need, I need a black. And they're like, I'll see what I can do. But if you bring them a blank canvas, they're like, oh, dude, I'll give you something fire. So I feel like sometimes a board and train can be a blank canvas and you're like, yes. And then sometimes you have to do like a crazy cover up tattoo and where it's like, it's not even like real tattooing at that point. It's like trying to fix some, some shit someone else did, man. And I, I honestly think that the behavioral work that I've had to do has helped me understand drive so much better as a decoy. Definitely. So that's why I started with before decoy. Did you guys start? Decoy first or uh, trainer first? Decoy first. Oscar. A hundred percent. I mean, I thought I was a trainer, uh, you know, but I definitely decoy uh, definitely uh, is what made me want to get more into dogs. D uh, decoy made you want to do the, the, the dog stuff more? Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. Because I just fell in love with French ring, and that was all I wanted to do. So, oh, hell so yeah. ring was first for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ring was first. Oh hell yeah! Nice. I mean, I I went to a Schutzen club, went to a Mondio ring club, went to a French ring club, and I stayed there for a while. For like that's I think that's where I learned most. So nice. I'm nice. Send you guys some videos of a. Uh, working these uh, French ring dogs that I have right now on my Tuesdays. So you guys can oh, laugh yeah. at me and be like, cause everything. <laughs> nah, Mike, I want to see the Mike Jones psychology, psychology <laughs> videos, bro. If you look back at like on the YouTube, it's like way, <laughs> way back, that. almost a decade back. Like there's like <laughs> one video, it's like bro, Mike Jones dog psychology. psychology. <laughs> Oscar loves that. <laughs> Oh, just like it, I, it, the fucked up part is, I didn't even come up with the goddamn name of it. I was just like, because at that point, I had before Primal Can, I don't know, actually, probably no one really knows this either. Um, when I was still uh training and fighting, I had a thing called the Primal Workout, it had the same almost same logo. That's uh, dope. of it. And then I was like, 
I was like sitting there thinking, I was like, well, fuck, man, it's all about natural body movements and all the other stuff. I'm like, all right, let's talk about communication. I had the dumbass name of Mike Jones, dog psychology stuff. So then <laughs> I was dope. like, all right, cool. So I was like, fucking primal canine. And then it just went from there. That's dope. And I remember seeing you, bro. I remember seeing you years back when I first got in. And I, you know, I seen the primal canine and shit. I'm like, damn, that's a badass name. I'm like, fuck, that motherfucker came up with a badass name. <laughs> but but you you kind of spun it differently, you know, because you were more like into like all the camouflage and all that shit. That was like back then. That was that was popping and shit. So you know, the real tree. <laughs> yeah, bro. Oh, I love me some real tree. Dude, that's like the work. We're actually going to pop that back up. I want to say, hey, no, yeah, this next, uh, this next winter here. So, yeah, expect some uh, merchandise. The what? <laughs> oh, okay, got it. I like expect that. some more of that coming to your guys' way. I like that. So nice, man. Let's talk about dog training business itself. So we've we've glanced over it a couple of different times. You know, it being twenty four seven, and you know, you know, having different passions within the dog training business itself. And you know, the thing that I've always struggled with. Uh, when it comes to the dog training business aspect of it is, and, you know, just teaching my apprentices and, you know, my trainers and everything like that is that, you know, owning a dog training business isn't just about dog training. You can be a badass dog trainer, badass decoy. You can do all this stuff, say like, all right, I'm going to let my name speak for itself, blah, 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 all this other stuff. But there's so many aspects that come into developing a successful business and maintaining a successful business. And, you know, all of us, we all have families. You know, we all have people that depend on us. We all have people that we need to provide uh, for and everything like that. We have employees, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, what has been your guys' biggest struggle as a dog training, you know, business owner, also being the head trainer of your guys' own companies? You know, because I know my struggle has been really hard, but like, I want to, I would like, you know, for people to see like, you know, more of like, being a dog trainer is, you know, it's not like, I, I, in my opinion, having multiple different professions, I feel like this is one of the, you're, like, you're in. Once you're in, like, there ain't no days off. Like, you're in this motherfucker, like, seven days a yeah. week, 24-7. Like, you're constantly having to, and because there's no standard, there's no unification of anything, like, you're constantly having to put the work in. You have to consistently evolve. You have to consistently progress and do these things but um what are your guys experiences with it go ahead andy oh man um shoot you know i fancy myself as a bit of an artist but then also a businessman on the other side of that and to have a good dog business you have to be both of those and usually to be both of those is extremely rare like you're either an artist or you're a business guy but it's hard to be both. And, and what I mean by that is like, dude, some days I just want to wake up and I just want to only think about training the dogs that I have in front of me. That's where I want all my energy to go. I want to be like an artist and just think about my craft and just go out to my oasis and go out to my field and just do my craft all day. Uh, but then I know on the other end, I have to be a businessman. So I got a bunch of voicemails. I got all kinds of emails coming in. This totally sounds like first world problems, but dude, I, I don't respond to every single email I get. Sometimes I don't respond to every single voicemail I get. Uh, and it's just, it's hard for me because I'm not like a big, you know, I'm a business guy, but I'm not a business guy. Like I don't sit down and, and crunch the numbers and, and and do all that kind of stuff. So the struggle for me is like, I just want to focus on the dogs I have in front of me, but you always have to be planning uh, the next round of boarding trains coming in. You always have to be planning for, you know, for this, for that. So kind of finding that balance between focusing on the craft, focusing on the business. Uh, that's what's yeah. tough is for me. If there's any knock against me, you know, I don't think any anyone could – uh, say bad things about my training, but people probably could say like, dude, I emailed that guy two or three times and he never got back to me. And yep. I'm like, I'm sorry, guys. Like, I'm seriously sorry, but I'm one freaking guy. Bro, I'm out there. Bro, I'm doing landscaping. Bro, I'm a fucking landscaper, dude. I'm out there <laughs> cutting. 
I'm out there edging like, hey, why don't you have someone do it for you? Fuck that, dude. They ain't going to do it right. I'm out there. I'm out there <laughs> painting my field. Like, I'm doing all kinds of shit, dude. I'm balls deep in grass clippings, fucking trimming bushes and shit. And it's like, hey, I got this wine grinder who's a mess. Like, can you help me out? I'm like, oh, uh, and I already have like tons of people. I'm like, I'm one guy, people. I'm one freaking guy. That's what's hard for me, dude. Yeah. Oh, sure. I mean, I, I think it's a, a very similar, uh, you know. Um, I mean, there's there's two sides of it. The business side, you know. And then for me, for sure, it's always been like, you know, the balance of like family and all that. But as far as business goes, I mean, I'm really good with people. I'm really good at, you know, training dogs. I, I really enjoy that. Um, for sure, I do. I'm just like Andy. I get a bunch of emails and sometimes I don't get back to them, you know. I get a bunch of calls and I, you know, be like, you know, send me a text and I'm gonna get back to you. And I never get back to them. And that's my biggest, uh, that's my biggest, uh, you know, fallout. I just, me too. Just, yeah. We just purchased a, a, a system that we hope, you know, is going to be in place. That's going to be able to, you know, do a, a lot of this stuff for us where people could just book online and, you know, it, it'll make it easier. But, um, that's my, that's my biggest theme, man. And if I'm going to be honest with you guys, I'm not the most, uh, like I'm very scattered brain. So like, I can't just like, all right, I'm going to finish this. I'll be like, I'm going to do this. Oh shit. I got to do this. And I come do this. And that's a, big, <laughs> that's a big, bad thing of, you know, bad habit that I have and shit. Yeah. Yeah. So, but when it comes to training, like, like if I go, all right, I have a competition that I can do. Cause I, you know, I just, I put my head down I just work. I get that done. But when I'm like within the business, I could, you know, I'm like always moving around. So now I got help. Uh, it's made it a lot easier, but still, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy for sure. Especially cause again, I'm not a business guy. So, and yeah, that's dude. the biggest, like you could be an amazing trainer, bro. But if you suck at business, it's hard to really get something going. I've seen some dudes that are mediocre at best at dog training, but they're really good at business and they have very, very successful businesses. So, you know what I'm saying? That's just, I hear you, dude. I think we can all relate to that. Oh no, it's tough, man. It's <laughs> the 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 workload on top of everything else is definitely uh like this is kind of like the stuff that I was talking about earlier about competitive sports and like doing things like that. You know, with me, like I, I obviously like you know, we always fight the uh, the urge to want to show and you know be like, hey, like look at you know it ain't just you know what we do on the behavioral side it isn't just what we do here. We do everything. Like that's been a big focus for me and doing that. But, you know, my ambition on the other side of like, you know, creating bigger, bigger companies and creating like a bigger thing for like my guys. Right. So I have, you know, I have two trainers, Matt and Lee, and I have two more trainers that we're going to expand in the next year. I mean, we haven't told anybody within Sonoma County and San, uh, San Mateo County that I'm going to be opening up here pretty soon. Plus another one in a different state here. Plus all the other shit that I'm doing, um, you know, so it's like, I'm like, all right, cool. It's like, you know, balance, finding that balance for that. You know, and Oscar, you brought up a good point earlier, which was awesome. Like, you know, the, the burnout point, like when you're constantly like, you're like I'll be, all, I'll be on flights and I'm just like typing up shit I got to do for, you know, the next business plan and everything like that. And like, I'll forget to sleep for like a day or something like that, or just like sleep for like four hours, wake up, do the same thing. And like, dude, it was like, man. And then every, and when I talk to like the normal people, like, well, you're a dog trainer. Don't you just get to play with puppies all the time? Like, yeah. And like inside of me, <sighs> like there's this fucking like rage. Like when someone <laughs> says that to me, I'm like, I, like, I almost want to go back to prison to like hurt you it's, really bad right nah. now. <laughs> like, it's Yo, so hey, disrespectful. Here, here it goes though, Mike. Uh, I, I, going back to what you're saying, bro. Like, oh, you know, I, I'm thinking about getting into sport. Look, man, we live like I, I had a client today and, sh and she's like, Oh man, I just like I get on Instagram and I see all these people and you know you get this big old like people think that you know that you're some like somebody bigger than what it, like bro like I was at In and Out oh I I see all your videos and this and that and I'm just like oh you know appreciate it thank you or whatever but having a successful business is a sport of its own you know what I'm saying so yeah and and you're gonna get people like that are younger that are gonna be look at you Mike and be like. Well, he don't, he, no, he's not a, a sport, uh, you know, a dog sport guy, but shit, he's built 
three fucking successful businesses and look at how he's living and this and that could be a sport on its own you know what i'm saying and a lot of entrepreneurs see their business like that they go this is a sport that i'm playing and i gotta win yeah. against all these other people so you know again bro like andy fell in love with french ring he loves that stuff i i'm into ipo and i love you know competitive sports but for sure i am like realizing that there's other things that are very important that, and I have to put them up there with, with the, with the sport. You know what I mean? I mean, great the sport point. does bring you something. It does bring something to you. I think it does bring you notoriety, but yeah. it brings you a lot of notoriety with a lot of other trainers, bro. Right. Train, like, it's not like, you know what I'm saying? Like if people that well, trainers don't pay the bills decoy. too. Yeah. It's like all these people are like, Oh, I don't know if I want to do that. Like these, these trainers are talking shit about me. And I'm like, bro, those trainers are not going to be paying you no matter what. So it doesn't matter about the trainers. It matters about the people that you're going to be helping with their pet dogs or with their sport dogs or whatever. So that's another way to, uh, to look at it, Mike. It's, it's not all about the, the sports stuff, bro. <laughs> and I, it, I think that that for me is more of an ego thing. Like that's, you know, for the longest time, especially with Primal Cannon when it first came, was more like, all right, you know, you know, he doesn't compete in sports, all this other stuff. Da, 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 da. I'm like, well, yeah, who I'm says that her. though? Trainers. Yeah, it's just all trainers. It's all <laughs> it's usually people, and then it's usually people that are doing less than you are as far as like business goes. I've been there, bro. I've talked shit about people before too. Like, oh man, his training sucks. But then I'm like, but then I'm like, damn. But this dude has a very successful business, and my business is definitely not where his is at. So I just need to shut up and focus on my own shit. It's a great yeah. point. Oh, that's huge, man. Like that's a, that's a big thing. Like that I've. I tell my guys, because, you know, my guys all have aspirations on getting different things. Like, Lee wants to do French Ring and PSA and all that stuff. Matt wants to do that stuff. And my other guys want to do, they want to do everything now. It's like what we're doing. So, I was tell them, I, 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 that's what I'm telling them. I, I was like, I'll, I'm just going to live through you guys. I'll, I'll decoy your dogs because, you know, I'm the only decoy that I trust in my, <laughs> in my, in my camp right now. So, like, you know, this is what I'm going to do. Like, you know, as far as, like, you know, catching safely and doing all the work that I need to do. But it's cool, man. Like that's the uh, within the business itself, and like the the one thing I love about dog training is that there's no standard, and I hate it too. But mm. there's no like, there's no ceiling yet. There's, I mean, what Caesar Milan? Like he's, yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's. Hey, bro, you can't, Andy, you can't hate on that guy, bro. Yeah, I can. No, bro. No, I can. That, that guy, that guy, you can. I mean, but I'm saying like he has the worst know. object guard ever. Do you see that lab? <laughs> hey, He's gonna pick him off. Yeah, and what about that lab? Come on, bro. The lab, really? Or bro, food. but you're talking like eight years ago. Come on, bro. This guy walked into a stadium with like fifty thousand people, bro. dude. Maybe I more, mean, bro. Whatever, bro. Dog training, whatever. But you gotta. I mean, he's did you see the one he did right, with bro. Steve Aoki? I mean, a, a that lot was a hundred thousand like... people. A lot of they got a new they got a new show too. coming out, bro, and it's gonna blow up. Watch, and it's I mean, people can say whatever they want about Caesar. If it wasn't for Caesar, I probably wouldn't have a dog training business because I never knew anything about it, bro. So, <laughs> I mean, look, dude, a, a lot you of would people definitely like have a dog training business. Too. I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> bro. Mike I'm just Jones would have never had the Mike Jones psychology <laughs> if if it wasn't for Caesar Milan, bro. I didn't even know Caesar Milan when I first started dog training. Dude, I mean, I I get both sides of it, but God, I think it was more of a detriment to the American dog than it was good. A I lot of it. Yeah, I, I can see that. I hate that. I can see that. I, and, but I I can guarantee, like, if I just bumped into him and we just like sat down and like had a drink or something, I'd probably be like, I love this fucking guy. This guy's yeah. cool. Like, no, I, I mean, I look, I, I get it, but I like real to hate quick. Too. So real quick, bro. Look, I have a client. I just returned his dog last week, and he's a uh, one of the producers for his next show that's coming out, right? And he's oh, like, okay. hey, bro. And he's telling like me, him. he's like, hey, he's like, Oscar, this guy shows up in his car, gets out of his car, he's like. All his dogs are just following him off leash. Nothing. <laughs> not just, not just his fucking dogs. He's got this fucking goat and like this fucking alpaca or some bullshit. He's like, they stop. He's like, if he stops to talk to you, they all just chill out and talk and just hang out. 
to listen to him. And I'm just like, holy shit. This guy, obviously, he has the right dogs. He picked all these dogs out because, you know. But still, that says something about the guy, bro. Like, I don't know what he's doing. Is. And he's definitely not where he were. I mean, I don't think any of us were where we were at fucking eight years ago. I know, dude. You make a you make a pretty damn good point, dude. I can't really argue with you on that one. You make a pretty damn good point. <laughs> I mean, Caesar himself, what he's done and everything like that, he's a motherfucking monster. You can't I mean, you can't deny that. Like like you you, bro, you can't deny that. You know, I, is he, it, I, and it's perspective. You know, that, now is he a, is he an amazing dog trainer? I have zero clue right now because I don't know what he's doing right now, but I can assure you that he's definitely not where he was when the show came along. Bro, and it's a show. You know how it could be, man. It's like but we're gonna I know. Can, but who can say we are where we when we first started? Nah, nobody. I mean, like, no one. I like, know. You can look at my stuff eight years ago and be like, what the fuck <laughs> was this motherfucker doing? Like, and then you look at it now, like, oh, hey, I get it. You just say yeah. that motherfucker. Like, you know, but he started off as like a fucking, uh, wasn't he like a, a groomer? I don't know what he was. He was like a dog walker, bro, or something like that. Yeah, like something, something like, like that, right? Then, like, but here, here's the thing, too, bro. Again, and and when I was in the in this French train club, bro, this was like huge, bro. The the training director was like, "Oh, I taught that guy this. I taught this," and I, and I never knew these people. And I would talk shit about them just because of what my my training director would be saying. I already had this perspective of these people, bro. We don't know these mo- like we don't. We're not around there to see them how they work. I'm not around Mike and be like, "Oh yeah, Mike sucks," or like, "No, you know, like we're not there, so you can't really say." Bro, I, I have shitty ass sessions sometimes that I'm sure if somebody watched the videos of me training dogs, they'd be like, what the fuck is he doing? I have those <laughs> sessions still. And and that's part of growing, you know what I mean? Oh, so, yeah, yeah, I think anyway, everyone whatever, does. Bro. Andy, don't be talking shit about Caesar, bro. <laughs> God, Oscar went so hard on the paint for Caesar, and how dare both of you for making me admit that Caesar Milan's have decent? How dare both of you? <laughs> I, I still talk shit about Caesar. I mean, I, it's fucking Oscar just saying it because he's Mexican and he's just like, hey, right, bro, I'm you, my, I hey, you're my boys. Not Mexican, Mike? You're not I'm part Mexican, Mexican oh, yes. No, <laughs> no, dude, I don't even know how my fucking name came apart. I'm Spanish, Mexican, fucking Japanese, Samoan, Welsh. And like a bunch of other shit, Puerto Rican and a bunch of other, like, like a bunch of billion other things. Like, I'm literally probably, and I was raised by a black lady. Like, I don't even know what the fuck. Like, I was like, I'm literally dope, just in though, the man. middle. You got, a, you got a bunch of different freaking, you know. I, my name's Mike Jones, too. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, how the fuck nah, did but, that happen? Hey, yeah, but for real, though, I mean, I get a lot of clients, bro, because they fucked their dog up doing some shit they saw on Caesar Milan. I'm grateful, bro. I'll get some money. You know what I mean? I'll help hey, him out, bro. I tell people all the time. I'm I like, love that, bro. I'm like, thank God for Caesar Milan because, I mean, shit, he pays the bills. Like, yeah, bro. So, motherfuckers are good. You guys make some strong points. You make some strong points, but. <laughs> At least he's not Sean O'Shea. Oh, and I, I don't blatantly go out and talk shit about people, but um, Sean Who's O'Shea that? was, was Cedar is one of his guys, the finger up the butthole guy. Um, talk shit about. He was- um, Ivan he was with Caesar. Them. Yeah, that's Caesar's guy. Finger up oh, the butt, dude. That's Caesar's yeah, number that's one how he, guy. To make him, it was shit. right. It was. Yep. Why it they? Was, think, why the butt? I just the yeah. finger to get him to stop fighting. There, there was a video that went viral after this guy talked shit about Ivan Bart and Michael Ellis, saying that these are oh. just four dog trainers. Yeah, yeah, I saw something about all that. Yeah, hey, bro, I'm not he's friends with one of my good friends, and I fuck that guy. I'm not even gonna mention his name, bro, because I don't want to give this guy that much attention. So, let's yeah, from that idiot. Okay, well, so, hey, spe- speaking of completely shitting on people, uh, <laughs> are you guys? And I'm not trying to be, but I this is random, this is funny. You guys are familiar with the master class. Yes. yes. It's like you oh, know please, the dog no. you know the dog trainer on there? Yes. yes. Okay, bro. Well, just follow me. Look, Mike already knows. Do you know Mike? Yes. Dude, just follow me two seconds. Just follow me. I can't bring myself to watch it, but I go, you know what? Let me watch it because going back to what Oscar said, I'm like, 
I can learn something from, you know, the filming that he's obviously doing. So I go, uh, let me bite the bullet and let me just watch this little four minute trailer. Let me suffer through it. Okay. So I'm watching it and, you know, I hate it, but I'm like, okay, hmm, I can see that. I hate that. Okay. I can see that. And then out of the blue, the guy completely goes off the rails and he goes, I have a Jack Russell Terrier and she took, and he starts crying and he's like, she took four years to actually walk up to me. He's like, my older dog died. And then finally, after four years of not wanting anything to do with me, she came up and sat on my lap. And I realized sometimes it just takes time. And I was like, you lost me with the four years, bro. You completely <laughs> lost me there. I'm gone. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> you lost me. And then I was like, done. I knew it. Done. <laughs> you lost me. Four well, years. Why I started, why I started <laughs> laughing early because I knew exactly what point you're going to because someone like, like tagged me in like, a video with it. I was like, four years? I was like, Dude, he went. Wait, he had me on board. I was like, okay, the sit, stay, a harness, step on the leash. I could see how people would like that. And then he hit me with the four years, and then the crying, and I go, I'm out. <laughs> nah, that's that's gotta be production, bro. That's gotta be somebody telling them like, yo, we gotta tug at these people's emotions. Uh, we need to sell this thing. We need to tug at these people's emotions. Yep. Let's do it this way. That's exactly what that is. That's bingo. Bullshit. Yep. And that's yeah, why I dude. tell everybody that films me all the time. I was like, you know what? You're going to get a lot of F words. You're going to get a lot of, you know, fucks and shits. And that's pretty much what's going to be. You're not going to get any emotion on that part. It's going to be Crazy, monotone. Bro. And this one's going to go. I'm so glad you saw that, Mike, because <laughs> I was like. See, now I need to go back and watch that shit. Dude, dude I got to study years. my opposition, bro. That's why I was like, it was like, all right, cool. Let me see like, what we got. Four years? What the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> God oh. dang it, dude. Dog training's tough for mainstream, isn't it? Because that's what that master class is. It's for mainstream. I mean, with the pet business well, stuff. Did dude. you notice after that happened, the pet coat thing happened? What's the pet coat thing? Have you guys have you, oh, have you guys heard yeah, about yeah. the pet coat shit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The no. stop the shock. Stop the shock. Look, man. Look, here, here's the deal with that, Mike. I'm getting angry. Look, go go to the hashtag Stop the Shock, or especially if you go back and look at all the purely positive trainers that are doing it. And then after you go to all to their page, go watch their videos. Okay, all you're gonna see is, hey, what's up? Um, you know, today we're gonna be da 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 da, and we and we're just against you know negative training. Da, 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 they need love, whatever, right? And then you go, okay, shit. Well, let me see some training. Maybe we're gonna see some good training. <laughs> look, bro. All the training that they show is literally crate games, which which I, I love to do. And with their border collie, they all have a border collie for whatever reason. They love border collies. And they're doing like, you know, Those are crack healing, like healing mm -hmm. and doing like, bro, border collies love to be with their owner. Like, you know, they're right. kind of like introvert dogs. They don't, and they're super like food motivated. It's like, bro, show me like, and and I, and I asked a couple purely positive trainers. I said, "Hey, is there anybody that's doing behavior modification that have like a because I want to learn I, if there's a way like let me learn because obviously right. I want to put the least amount of pressure as possible, bro. There's nobody out there doing it. The dude that is doing there's it no has results. videos has videos on like how to how to fit a muzzle, how to feed through the muzzle, how to. It's like, bro, like show me. Let yeah, me yeah." Stop the shock. You know what's interesting? Stop the shock. Can we do a survey and see how many people have invisible fences? Also, did you say Jeff Gilmore? They still yeah. sell them. Did someone say Jeff Gilman? I, I didn't. Did. I, hey, I know that he guy. is. Everyone's he good. Is, but no. Everyone's good with an invisible fence, though, right? Everyone's well, good with an invisible them. fence. They still sell them at Petco. They stopped selling e collars, but they still sell them as a fence. Oh, so and they'll shock collars. the piss out of them for leaving the yard, but they won't. 
Dude, an bro, invisible fence? You know how high the level Listen, is? Bro, that's for fence? sure a tactic to... That's a, that, I mean, and then they go, oh, and we're going to offer a free, purely positive class for oh, anybody yeah. that wants to join. It's, 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 usually, it's just a marketing thing, bro, because they want to get more people in for training. That's just it. Yeah, we're, we're going to play grab ass for an hour, and I'll talk about how much we like rainbows and unicorns. Yeah, fuck those guys. But, <laughs> hey, but let's be honest. We're going to keep getting those clients from Petco because Petco <laughs> are not the best. And they're, it's going to be more money. Hey. I mean, like, that's the thing. It's going to be more money because you deal with a bunch of bullshit from fucking Petco and with all these other positive reinforcement fuckers. And then you go and, like, oh, hey, like, I've been feeding my dog cheese when they growl at me because I want to redirect it. I'm like, yeah. well. I, yeah. <laughs> I watched another guy uh, purely positive because I'm telling you, bro, I was like, I couldn't believe it. So I was like, I'm going to go look at this guy because, you know, he seems to be growing on Instagram. He had his, you know, he was walking on a no pull, no pull harness or something like that on his long line with his flip flops on he's like look this walk is not about you this is about the dog so we're gonna let him do whatever he wants to do sniff whatever he wants to sniff because it's about the dog it's not about the human right and i'm just like nah bro like i don't know what world you're in the but fuck that's... it is <laughs> so anyways that's well that's kinda how let's talk about this way when it comes to dogs so I, I the the conversation I have with dogs, uh, you know, with people on the dogs and all that stuff, because everyone's like, "Well, they're wolves and all this other shit." I'm like, "No, they're not fucking wolves. They're domesticated animals. They are fucking dogs. We bred them to be dependent and biddable. Like, and we all of a sudden want to be like, "Hey, motherfuckers, be free!" And then we have <laughs> a bunch of fucking problems. Why do we have problems? Because we got away from being dependent and biddable. Like, you know, this is what the fuck we're trying to do. Like, you know, these, you, what do you, what do you, like, what, what's happening here? Like, obviously dogs are more independent than others, but I'm like, what are you trying to do as a dog trainer? And like, when people say all this other stuff, like I had a, I had a, a client who talked to me probably a month or so ago, maybe a couple of months ago. And the, they're like, well, you got to spit in their dog's food and like, you know, do all this other stuff. Like, you know, they practice this wolf pack thing. I'm like, it's like us to fucking gorillas. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, Listen, bro. All these purely positive... Like, bro, they beat the shit out of their dog when nobody's looking. <laughs> I right bet. Now, bro. I'll bet you, bro. <laughs> I, actually, I, I know of one that looked they like... Beat the shit there, out was, of them. there was somebody that was training with this person. And, you know, she, I'm not going to say any names. She's a purely positive. And this dude, this dude was like, hey, bro. She grabbed this dog and shoved them inside the pantry and shit because she was so pissed. And and she's a pure and she's a purely pot. And I'm just like, uh, you know what I mean? If you just if you just do it the right way, you won't have these issues. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, hey, if that's if that's your personality and that's what you like to do, definitely do it. But it's not mine. Yeah. Fuck it's him. not. It's definitely not mine. That would be. I, you have to be authentic with the dog too. Like you can't blow smoke up the dog's ass. You can't try to kiss the dog's ass all day. You can't try to do a song and dance and you can't try to do like, you have to be authentic with the dog. So if I were to be like, Hey guys, I'm, I'm purely positive now. Like, I think the dog's just going to call bullshit. I, I think he's going to know yeah. that I'm trying to do a tap dance with him. And I think he's going to be like, who the fuck is this guy? Because dogs, just as an animal, they aren't purely positive. Like, they're not. Oh. They don't. They all just don't hang out and be like, God, I love life. Let's all go snuggle and kiss and be happy. It's not in a dog's nature. to Like, in a dog's nature is to kill shit. Like, they want to hunt and they want to kill shit. And they want to uh, – kids on a playground. And they, and they want to dominate and they want to they wanna test shit. So it's not natural to a dog – to be purely positive, and if you are purely positive to a dog, like I said, if that's genuinely who you are, then definitely do it. But for the most part, that purely positive stuff, that's coming from an emotional place. And when you're coming from an emotional place trying to train dogs, that ain't no bueno, dude. I don't care who you are. Emotional training, they don't go together. So I think that the dog can, can kind of call bullshit on that, dude. Well, one of the first books I read, and I remember being like, it was like, I don't even know, like 14 or something like that. But it was like talking about dogs communication and communicating on a paralanguage. 
Uh, and like paralanguage was like an energy based thing. Like, and I was like, at that point, I was like, dude, like, you know, I'm a kid from the hood. Like, I didn't give a fuck. I was like, whatever the fuck. Like, I don't even understand self energy and all this other stuff. I'm just, you know, a, just a dummy just running around doing dumb things. And I didn't understand that until years later. They're like, you know, God was human. It was an agitator book. And I was like, you know, like, you know, well, you know, God was human kind of paralanguage. They understand like what the, what you're bringing to them and all this other stuff. And like, this is about being a decoy or a helper. And I didn't get it. I didn't understand it when I was that young. I was like, because I don't understand what they're talking about, like the parent language, the energy that you provide to the dog. And like, and later down the years, I started to understand, I was like, oh shit. I was like, it is very much about what you present to the dog and silently, you know, just energy based things that you can do to create either confidence, insecurities, you yeah. know, defensive drives, prey drives, things of that nature that you, you, you basically self emulate, you know, to the dog. And like, that was one of the things I thought it was like super cool. Like later down the line, I was like, like, Whoa, what the fuck? I was like, and then I started teaching my clients. I was like, what you do, you know, shows down the line to your dog, you know, your leech is a transmitter. And, you know, not even that, just like, you know, just your energy is a transmitter to the dog you have in front of you. And I thought that was really cool. Like, like I went 13 to whatever, 26 or whatever. When I first started like realizing what the fuck that was, that was really cool. I like that. Yeah, that's that's a good point. You know what I try to teach, uh, kind of piggybacking off that. I, it, the typical pet client is they're always they can't wait to say something to the dog. What command is this? I need a command for that. What do I say here? What do I say there? Silence is golden. You need to just completely zip, worry about the commands later. But you need to work with the dog and stop trying to think about like saying stuff and like touching it and talking and touching it and talk, leave it. No, sit down. That's like my thing. I'm always like, sit down. No, off, leave it over here. Fido, no, over here. And it's like always giving like this kind of feedback to the dog. And I'm like, um, I'd much rather you, you know, you maybe have a leash on the dog and you bring them over here when you need them over here. Or when they jump on the counter, you get them off of the counter, but stop worrying about talking until it knows exactly what the fuck the words mean. So I, I couldn't agree with you more on that, Mike. It's like, stop talking to it like it's like it's your own. Yep. Zip it. Zip it. No touchy. No touchy the doggy. <laughs> you got anything on that Oscar before we get to questions nah was, I agree with Andy what was that yeah, except Andy, that I, I hate that. Caesar Milan that's yeah, gonna bro. really that's I mean, gonna drive a wedge between us dude, dude we were doing great till the Caesar Milan that yeah, really it's alright bro that got it's treated right. dude <laughs> oh shit <laughs> <laughs> alright so question uh, we have a couple questions here so um how do you guys start out before being a uh, professional dog trainer? So basically, how do you guys start being a professional dog trainer? You guys pick who was first. Well, off the top of my head, I'd say research months, maybe years. And like the golden ticket is when someone legit lets you tag along. That's the golden ticket right there. If you want to be a dog trainer, find a trainer and don't stop bugging them. Don't stop showing up at their house. Pick up all the shit, clean all the crates, give all the baths, and be ready to be on your freaking grizzine for a couple of years minimum. But you have to like glob yourself onto someone that knows what they're doing. And when you're not in their presence, you need to be not on some bullshit YouTube videos, but you need to be like paying for some legitimate video. <clears throat> PCU.primalk9.com. You, but seriously, <laughs> you need to be like, don't expect to be like, well, that didn't, dude, you're going to have to want it like a mofo. So find yourself yep. a trainer and harass them. Yeah. 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 Nah, same thing. I think, you know, you got to always be looking for information, 
find some find people that you could work under and just keep growing man and don't don't look at the bullshit online and don't compare like don't don't believe shit like i'm not gonna believe it's somebody that tells me hey andy doesn't know anything if i've never been in his presence working dogs or you know don't cut anybody off kind of just go look at them see what they're doing because you might get good shit and you might get shit that you're never gonna do that you're gonna be like i'm never gonna do that so you know that that's kind of where it goes i do see a lot of people right now that are like i want to be a dog trainer and literally train with you know primal canine for a camp and all of a sudden boom that's it i'm, I'm gonna start my own shit oh I, we see a ton of that you know uh I, yeah I highly, dis- I highly discourage you from doing that i say you know put a couple years in forget about the money in the beginning uh, the money will come just love getting into dogs and training it's a great point i mean that, that's the i mean i looked at this i, I lived in a tattoo house for a while and you know tattoos um, oh yeah and you know the big thing that i understood because th- there's no there's no school for tattooing there's no academy there's no nothing for tattooing and i always appreciated what they did as far as how they did their mentorship programs and like their apprenticeship programs it was always hardcore stuff uh and even when i was boxing like you know, if you want to be a trainer and all this other stuff, like, you know, or MMA, like, you know, you had to earn your way into it. And like you said, Oscar, like, you know, there's, you're going to go years without paying, you're going to go years without the stuff, but you're getting the stuff and knowledge. And like, that's one of the biggest things for me. Like when I first like started, you know, learning how to dog train, I went <clears throat> over a decade without, you know, decade and a half without making money in dog training. Uh, and I was like, oh, cool. I was like, you know, I felt it was fine, but I was gaining knowledge. Uh, and even then, you know, it's been, you know, shit, man. I mean, I'm 36. I started when I was 13, you know, whatever. That's like fucking 23 years. Like, I feel like it's still then. Like now we're now we're you know at a point where I'm more comfortable. I can provide a decent living for my family. Um, but still, like you know, it's uh, even now. Like, like cool. We're constantly. <laughs> but, I mean, so you know, as far as starting learning, uh, being a dog trainer. Be prepared to, like Andy said, scoop a lot of shit, clean a lot of kennels, shut the fuck up, listen to people who are going to, you know, teach you. Don't be over opinionated, especially when you're in your first few years, because that yeah. happens to a lot of dog trainers. You know, like while Oscar was saying, I've been doing this for this, blah, blah, blah. If you've been training dogs for three or four years and all of a sudden you think you know what the fuck's going on, you have no fucking clue what the fuck's going on. You need no. to see I've been, I know. I, I thought I knew like a lot. You know what I mean? Like literally. I think we years. all did. Like the the three year mark, bro. It's like a mark that you're like, I know, and you can't. Oh, tell I know me that everything. I'm wrong shit. Yeah. Oh and yeah, dude. That's and that's, that's like the worst part too, because you don't know fuck. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's everyone, dude. Forget oh. about the money. That's my advice to people that want to be a dog trainer. Forget about the money. You ain't gonna make no money. Yeah. Forget about it. It figure out, figure later. out some other way. Get get a night job. I don't know. Save. Forget the money. You ain't making money. Yeah. I would. What was uh? What was the years that you guys felt that you were like, all right, cool? I mean, like, I'll even say this because I mean, I probably think you guys are probably in the same you know boat that I am in. Like even now, like I don't feel like, like I like, I, there's still more learning to do. Like lots of learning to do. Always. Yep. Always. Hundred percent. I was, I was, I was at a seminar this morning, bro. Learning. So. Nice. Yeah, that's the same shit. Like almost, like almost constantly. I, I was in Colorado when I was talking to you, uh, Oscar. Um, you know, I was talking to my, Matt Aikenhead, who, uh, you know, him and fucking, um, fucking Mike Subtle started majority of like, you know, the big training stuff out here with uh, like you know the roast like all that other stuff. And like I was like talking to him out there, and I was like, "Dude, I'm just like, I'm just shutting the fuck up." I'm like, "I'm just gonna listen." Like, <laughs> like yeah. you just you just keep talking about what you want to do. I'm just gonna keep listening because um, you've been doing this longer than I've been alive. So let's go ahead and. hundred percent, man. Like you gotta learn from these old timers. hundred percent, dude. And you know what it is? I'm I'm glad that the seminar thing got brought up because I actually wanted to bring this up at some point. Because it's like a little pet peeve of mine, but it's also uh, really freaking important. So, like, if you go to a seminar, uh, it, 
take me for example uh a couple years ago i went to a seminar uh this french trainer he's like a legend he's one of my favorites and when you go to a seminar you don't tell and you're asking for help right you're there like you're like hey i'm here to learn i want to learn from you don't tell the person that you've already tried it don't do like oh yeah no i tried that so like here's an example like if i go to a seminar and i go hey like my dog does this and i want to fix it and the guy goes try this and even if i feel like i've already been doing that like well no i've been doing that and it hasn't worked like even if i feel that way shut the trap shut up because zip it go go home and think about like rethink it like well no i've been correcting him that way for that and it doesn't work like it's it's more complicated than that it's like you have to listen you have to think forget what you already think you've done completely forget it and literally be a sponge and if you feel like you don't get anything out of it then hey that's how you feel but don't tell them don't be like well no i already did that well i tried that well if i do that he does that well if he dude just listen to him because sometimes if you go huh yeah okay and then maybe like really think about it and then maybe you ask like a really good follow up question that you may think you already know the answer but you ask a really good follow up question now they start to talk more now you and then they go huh this guy really wants to learn from me no one wants to deal with the know it all well i tried that it didn't work yeah, well you, nah. you got it all figured out then apparently that's like the big dude always be a student and even if someone tells you something you think you already know think about it yep Yep, 100%. Definitely, dude. Definitely. You see that all the time at seminar. Well, I tried that already. And the, the thing, on. too, is that, like, when you try that already, depending on the trainer, you know, let's say, let's us three, we have a different way of getting a dog into the original foos or focus still or whatever it be. I tried this already. I tried it for Mandy. I tried it for Oscar. I tried, like, we have different ways of doing this. Right. Like, there, there's so many different ways of doing this just yeah. shut up and listen that's what it's all about dude follow their advice blindly i mean if you trust them follow yep. the advice blindly dude because you that's that's what i do for myself like i go to a seminar and someone tells me something and i genuinely feel like but i already know that i can already yep. do that but i don't say that I think about it and I go, well, why did he say that? Why is that so important? This is how I feel. But like, it's, it's really more here than it, you know, like Oscar said, when, when I set you up with the, uh, what's the secret to the attention heal? You're like, there's no secret, dude. Like, that's the exact point. Like, there's no, well, if you do this, you're going to have it. Right. Like, there, there is none of that, dude. It's, it, it's up there. Yeah. Another thing about that is uh, it's a, it's an art. And sometimes as you know, Mike has a style, Andy, you have your style. And it's like, I, I you know, if you try to go to a seminar, and you change your whole style to what their style is. It's not going to work out because it's an art. You still have to have your feel to it, the way you do things. So make sure that, you know, you still leave that. Well, I think too, is like, that's you know, we talk about art. It's like art's never perfect. Yeah. Art is never perfected. There is no perfection when it comes to art. Like, you know, it's always individual. It's always perspective. It's always, you know, what they think of it is, you know, it's always these different lanes. You know, if you look at any different yep. sport, if you look at any different um, artistic, you know, thing, like, you know, everything is individualistic. Everything is perspective. Yep. And so, you know, what is perfect in one art is not perfect in another art. You know, it, right. it's always independent. And, you know, that's a really important thing to understand, especially because, you know, dog training, dog training is a broad term considering the many sports. I mean, think about protection sports. There's a variety. Think about the AKC, AKC obedience sports, rally sports, dog diving, all these millions of different things that we can do. Dog training is not dog training. You know, it's artistic values based on the training that you're working with. Um, yeah, yeah. But before we uh, end this one, 
So the last question I'm going to ask is, what inspired you to get into dog training? Caesar Milan. Hundred percent. A hundred percent. Caesar Milan. I'm sorry. I had to do it. <laughs> All right. oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Ass, oh, come on, dude. I'm kidding around. I'm kidding around. Nah, it's all good. Wow, dude, that is actually a great, great question. Oh, dude, I'll be totally honest. I fell into it. I never sought out to become a dog trainer. I never thought, I want to be a dog trainer. How can I make it happen? That yep. thought never, I completely fell into it. But I have the kind of personality where when I start something, I just, I never quit for better or worse. Uh, dude, it, it sounds super cliche, but maybe it found me. Like I wasn't out there looking for it. I really wasn't. And then I fell into it and then I kept showing up and then I kept showing up and then I kept showing up. And then, then one day I realized like, well, this is better than anything else that I can think of doing. Yep. And then I just stuck with it, but I never, it, it was probably, for me, it was probably dumb, dumb luck because I think I would have been obsessed with anything I did, you know, whether yeah. it was uh, home renovations or, you know, contractor work, uh, whatever I would have picked, I would have really went in on. So the the dog thing, dude. I think it was just a pure stroke of luck for me, to be honest, dude. It, right. It was a pure stroke of luck, and thank the Lord Jesus. <laughs> How are you, Oscar? Um, honestly, man, like I was just thinking about this yesterday because I'm like, man, I want I want to make like a you know, like a little video of like, like how it kind of started for me, and. I mean, as far as I could think, man, I was a little kid, bro. Like I could, I could remember all the dogs in the neighborhood. Like I remember, you know, my neighbor, like I don't remember my neighbor's name, but I remember his dog's name. You know what I'm saying? And so I just always had like this connection for some reason with dogs. Uh, as far as like how I fell into dog training, man, I have no clue, bro. I, I, I got it. I wanted to buy a dog and I needed training for it. And then it just happened. And Caesar Milan helped. <laughs> hey, is this is it fair to say that most good dog trainers I don't want to say had like a troubled childhood because I don't think I had a troubled but like they didn't exactly grow up normal? Am I off on that? Cuz this is like kind of I don't a know, crazy bro. Thing to in what do. in what way? In what way? Well, for me, I I I Cause I grew up in Eastside, so like I was like, like the my dogs were my saviors, cause I didn't want to be inside my house, cause inside my house like there's a lot of abuse, so like I would always be outside finding strays, either running away from those motherfuckers to try to bite me, <laughs> bite me, or trying to make them yeah. my friends. So like that was like yeah. that was my friend, that was me when I was like you know young, but I don't, yeah, that was me. Yeah, I guess I just maybe I mean like I wasn't like um, like me personally, I wasn't like a, a jock. I wasn't a Mr. Popular guy. I wasn't this and that. Like I was, I was drawn to dogs, dude. Like I'd rather hang out with dogs than anything. Like amazing. I don't think I was the typical like. I was probably whatever. the of both of those, either Little dogs bro. or in juvie. Yeah, I grew up <laughs> in the hood, bro. Like in the ghetto, ghetto, and my first experience with dogs was like walking around with a little pit bull and looking for another dog. To you know, to to get it. I hate to say it like that. I didn't know any better. I was a kid, but that's what we were into. You know? <laughs> I remember I had a couple bulldogs, and we would keep them in an abandoned house. And I, after school, I'd go walk them around the neighborhood. Like that's that's what I that's where I started from. You know what I mean? Like it was it was pretty ghetto all the time. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's, how I ended that's up here, I have about. no clue. <laughs> <laughs> So, Dude, that's, uh, the that's answer to the question is about. they can start from anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, you know, it's like if you're a stand up comedian, if you're like really funny and you're great, you probably didn't have like a normal, super happy, healthy upbringing. You know, so you, you kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you, it's, you're like an artist. Like if you're a crazy huge rock star, like you probably didn't grow up in the suburbs with like a super loving family and go to private school. Yeah, unless you're Justin of, Bieber, but still. Yep. Ooh, <laughs> exception. <laughs> exception well, to the rule. It gives you a little flavor, you know? So we got, let's see, I got to log us off here because we have two-hour time limit on uh, Chromecast or uh, Crowdcast. But we're going to go meet up in the green room after this. I appreciate you guys being on this, man. Uh, I can't even tell you how much I appreciate you guys to be on here, Oscar, uh, Andy, for being even PCU instructors. For the people who are watching this, you, and you guys probably won't appreciate this right now, but you literally have some of the best trainers in the goddamn world between even just these two individuals uh, on PCU. So you definitely need to check these guys out. Check their courses out. PCU is on a whole other different level when it comes to uh, dog training and courses and everything like that. So as Andy says all the time, we're coming in hot with another banger. And these guys have a bunch of stuff. So I appreciate you guys for being on world-level dog trainers. Uh, make sure you follow their account. Uh, you know, best in the world, and I will see you guys on the other side. Let's so, thanks again for yeah. tuning in for thanks episode for 15. Us. Thanks, of guys. And dogs. Love you. Cheers, right, brother. brothers. Uh, I know Oscar's drinking water, and he's drinking. Oh, that didn't look right. <laughs> Wait up. Let me go back. <laughs> <laughs> we got you, brother. I will see you Peace guys out. later and the, on the other side here. But appreciate everyone for tuning in. And again, peace to you online. Absolutely. Check it out. Anger. Thanks, y'all. Banging. 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 <laughs>